What is up everybody and welcome to the 29th Java tutorial and this one we're going to be talking about the queue. So what the queue is, it's a, a list, it's a collection of elements just like the array list, the link list, and the stack that we just went over. But the queue has its own way of doing things. So let's get started. So the queue is first in, first out. Now a way to think of a queue similar to how we thought of the stack. So a queue can be like a line at a grocery store. So the first person that gets in the line is the first person that gets out of the line and so on and so on. So if somebody gets in the line and then somebody gets behind them and then somebody gets behind them, it goes in the order of the people or things that went in there. So just like that, first in, first out. So that's a good way to think of the queue. Now the queue is an interface. It's not um, a class in itself, it's an interface and we'll cover interfaces later, but just so you know, you can't instantiate an interface because an interface is like a blueprint, but we'll cover that in later videos. But right now, let's go ahead and use the queue and, or create one and then use the queue to do some list type stuff. Right here is a list of things that you can use the queue for and I'll explain that. Let's create the queue. So you want to start spelling out queue, just like the other ones. Queue, and then you need a data type. Do string, queue. Equals new queue. And then your data type again. So, and you see how it won't, won't let me do this. What it'll say is, first let's import, and then right here. It's gonna say, cannot instantiate the type Q. And that's because, like I said, it's an interface. So what you do is you use one of these concrete classes to instantiate your Q. And we're gonna use the linked list because we are familiar with the linked list is. And remember, the linked list is just a way of storing data and it stores it in nodes. All right, so hover over your linked list and then you'll need to import that as well. All right, so now we do have a queue and let's see the different things it can do. So just like the other list, it can add, it can insert, it can get an element, remove the element and also get the size. You can check if it's empty, you can search it. So let's go through this. All right, so get the size of the queue. We know this one, it's gonna be call your object and then we'll just type out size and there you go. So what that's gonna do is it calls the method of the queue and returns whatever it is. So run it and we can see that size is zero. Now I already have a blueprint and that's why you can see the other things down here. All right, so size is zero and then we're gonna add some things to the queue. And a lot of times that's called in queue to add things to the queue and then DQ is to remove things from the queue. That's terminology used generally for the queue. But here we're gonna just use basic terminology just add and remove. All right, so let's add some names. Let's just pretend that it's a, a line at the grocery store. So let's add some names. All right, so queue.add. We'll just put in some names here. We got Sally. Add a couple more. So she's first in line. Uh, let's do Bob jumped in. Lee. And we'll do Jess. All right. So we just added four names to the to the queue. So if you think about it, that would be like a grocery line. Sally's up first, Bob's right behind, Lee's hanging in there, and then Jess is jump, has jumped in the back. Now let's check the size. Have it right here. And we'll run it, and you can see right now the size is four. So we added those four people to the queue. 
Now we can start removing from the queue. And instead of just putting remove, let's do next in line. So you can kind of understand how, like in the real world context, how it works. Because that's really the best way. Like if you can understand the syntax, how it works, but understand also what is going on and how the code is working, that's the best of both worlds a little bit. All right, so next in line, and we'll say q.remove. So let's run that. Okay, so we can see right here, Sally. So next in line is Sally. So when we removed it, it went to the queue and removed the top one, which was Sally. And remember, Sally went in first, so she was in front of the line, and she also came out first. Okay, we'll, do, we'll copy that a couple more times. So now we have three total that we removed. So we have Sally, Bob, and Lee. Now, if we look in there, Jess should still be in there. And we also know that there is a peak method within the class. So we can try that. So it'd be q.peak. And remember, the peak method is used to look at what's coming up next, what's next in the list. And with a queue, it's first in, first out. So we'll run that, and we can see right here that Jess is, in fact, next in the queue. All right. There's also a search. And how you use that. You can search the list, the queue. Um, how you want to do that is you call your queue object, and you can name it anything, and then it's dot contains. So what that does is it returns true or false of whether or not it's in the queue or not, whatever object, whatever data you're searching for. So let's look for, let's see if I'm in the line, and we will check also if Jess is in the line, which hopefully Jess is. All right, so you see right here, false, said no, Andrew is not in that queue. I'm not in the queue. But when we search for Jess, it did in fact say true. We can also clear the queue. You can get rid of all the data. Now let's run the size again, so let's So size, it'll show twice right now. So you can see right there, size is one, because remember, there's only one left in the queue, because we removed the three. And between those, where it says size equals one, let's clear the queue. So all you do is type in your object, and then clear. And that method returns, or it clears the queue, gets rid of everything that's in it. Run it, and we can see right here, in fact, Size is now zero. And the last thing we can check, there's many more too. The, the queue, especially depending on which of these you use, the queue has different methods and can do different things. But generally, this is what a queue is and what it does. There's specialty things that you can do, but this is the general concept of what a queue is. All right, so we can check to see if the queue is empty. All right, so say empty. All right, so call your object. And then is empty is the method for that. And if the queue is empty, it'll return true, meaning there's no elements in it. And if there is elements in it, then it will return false. And we can see from right there that it returned true because we cleared it. And you can see too, the size is zero and it is true, it is empty. So 
these are some of the basic things of a queue. Uh, a real world thing of like a concept of how a queue is used. Uh, you can think of it as a printer. So in a business, if a printer it serves many computers, it runs off a queue. So if there's 10 computers connected to it and each of them are printing, it's the first ones that click print. The first ones that print, those are gonna come out first because it, everything goes into the queue. Um, online order processing, like Amazon, the queue is the exact same thing. So if, it has, if you have six items left and eight people press buy, the first six that press it are going to get the item. It's just um, the same exact thing. So the, a queue is used for those types of examples. And like a call center, you know, when you're on wait for a call and it says you have six in front of you, that's because you're in a queue and you're number seven. All right, I hope that helped understand the queue a little bit. Go ahead and make one and play around with the methods and try to understand it and then you'll be well on your way to coding. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.